Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new episode of The Shuffle Pod. We are on episode 11 now, and we got Mr. Finalist himself at Peoria Regionals, Cal Connor, as our guest today. Yo, what's up, Cal? Yo, what's up? What's up, bro? So, yeah, we're excited to have Cal on. Of course, Cal is on The Shuffle Squad. Cal's had a pretty good season so far. Of course, he got ninth place at Baltimore. Ninth place at the World Championships, and now he got second place at Peoria. So he is on an insane run right now, and it's only like been the first couple tournaments of the season. So we're excited to talk with Cal and kind of run through his thought process, why he played Palky at a Peoria, um, especially with all the new cards out and all the new big decks out in the format right now. And uh, we kind of want to talk about the meta going into Salt Lake City, and uh, Cal can probably give us like a recap of how his tournament at Peoria went. Before we get into all that, of course, we got to do our weekly roundup and how our weeks have been. So we'll start off with Lindsay. How has your week gone so far? My week has been very long, very mm. crazy. It's been a really crazy week at work. Um, it's a very emotionally exhausting week at work. Just a lot, you know, y'all, y'all hear about it every week about all that crazy stuff. Um, so it's been a little bit exhausting, but I, I've played Pokemon physical cards every single day. Um, I was trying to prepare for this 1K tournament that I actually just got back mm -hmm. from over at my local store, Win Condition in Kennesaw, Georgia. Um, so I just got back from there. I played Palkia. Might be the last time I'm gonna play it for a while. <laughs> tired. Um, I took out all the silly texts, like I took out Napoleon. It doesn't even really stop anything at this point. So it's kind of just like one of those cards that, you know, I, I took out the Ordinary Rod, I took out Pal Pad, I took out all those cards that like clog up my hand. In the beginning, uh, don't really add that consistency. I'm we, I, I'm definitely more of a conservative player, but I'm trying to branch out from that and uh, get rid of those safety net cards and go for the more consistent stuff. And so that's what I did. And then I bricked hard today. Um, lots and lots of like Sobble Pass, uh, Manaphy, rain splash, you know, all that, all that stuff that happens when you, when you broke with Palkia. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. But I do have like a quick, funny story. So I got to see somebody today that I haven't seen in like 10 years. It's an actually a really interesting story. So I had met um, some people at my locals, like doing like the 1K stuff. And, you know, um, this one guy had come up to me and was like, hey, like, I think like I think you might know my girlfriend, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. like, you know, what like who? Who? And it turns out, Macy. I know you're listening, Macy. You're the real one. Um, I taught her when she was in high school, and I was that's when back when I was teaching music. So I was teach. I taught her marching band when she was in high school. She was in the front ensemble. So like I taught her section, and then like ten years later we magically rekindle playing Pokemon and so she was there today huh. and and we got to play and I, I misplayed bad against her <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a good game though it was a good game um but yeah like I thought like what a small crazy world like I haven't seen her literally in 10 years I taught her when she was in high school and then like now we're both playing Pokemon like it's just so crazy that is crazy yeah. that is Kinda small crazy. world small world we live in what was she playing yeah like I'm curious. She was playing Zorark. She was playing Zorark. Zorark V Star. Um, nice. Yeah, Zorark V Star, and and I, uh, it was it was round six, and like I I was already like two three, but Dylan and I rode together, and he was playing as winning in, so mm. I, I was like I might as well play Pokemon while I'm there. I'm just gonna keep playing. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I my brain was elsewhere. I was trying to do like a. a a, a sneaky little quick shooting, aqua bullet quick shooting or something on the Dunsparce and it echoing horned it back up. But then I, when I aqua bulleted, I put 20 on the Dunsparce that didn't have any damage nah. on it because it echoing horned it. And then she returned, knocked out my Palkia. <laughs> yeah, you just walked into the zone. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I ended up squeezing that one out. I did a not double qu cross switcher, but quadruple qu cross switcher. It's hard to say. To be able to knock out, take that last prize. So mm. that's pretty much it for my week. Um, I'm going to start stepping out, playing some new stuff, playing some new decks, getting outside my comfort zone. So yeah, that's pretty much how my week has been. LDF, what about you? Yeah, my week's been kind of kind of mundane. I mean, I'm just making content 
every day making new videos on new decks. Uh, today, though, or I should say yesterday, kind of an unfortunate situation. So I bought a Pokemon Center Brilliant Stars ETB, and I had a special Charizard delivery code on top of that that I got gifted from Pokemon. And unfortunately, my package got stolen. So yesterday, I was in the middle of recording a video, and my doorbell rang. I'm like, I can't answer that. I'm in the middle of a video. I'm not going to answer the door while I'm filming a video. And like maybe like 10, 20 minutes later, I go downstairs. The, there's nothing in the door. I checked the doorbell camera, and the FedEx person dropped the package off. And when I went outside, there's no package there. So someone stole my Pokemon Center stuff, and now I'm kind of salty because that's like I spent like ninety dollars because that stuff ain't cheap. <laughs> did uh, what did, did did the camera pick up anyone swiping it? No, that's the problem. I I only got the uh only got the person the the FedEx driver dropping the product off. Really? Yeah. I sent a support ticket in, mm. obviously, to Pokemon Center. So I hope I can get a refund. If not, I'm gonna be kinda salty. Like I really want that Charizard. Like I got yeah, yeah like I got the I got the Pokemon Center ETB because I could add it to like the, the ETB stack I have in my background. Um but that was like ninety dollars. Like that stuff ain't cheap on Pokemon Center. And like I want that Charizard. Like I got that code gifted from Pokemon, so shout out to Pokemon for mm -hmm. sending me that code. And I finally was like I finally remembered to use it and like I, when I do it, I my package gets stolen, like not even twenty minutes later, so that's awesome. Man. I have the video file of the package getting dropped off, so at least I can maybe, like, send it to, like, Pokemon or FedEx or whatever to get that sorted out. But fortunate scenario to be in is what it is. Um, I don't order much from Pokemon Center, so, I mean, that's already left, like, a bad taste in my mouth. Um, so, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, Dang. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, the good thing is yesterday I got fourth place at uh, Locals with Reggie. Good old Reggie doing his Reggie thing. My only loss was... Yeah. <laughs> My only loss was to Palkia Kiram because he had two Clap Stadium in the deck. Yeah, oh. the, the one Palkia Kiram deck with two Clap Stadium bodied me because I prized a path and I couldn't find one. And by the time he had like two prizes remaining, I could I scooped because I had no way to win the prize race. But uh, Reggie yeah. is still Reggie. I'm like known as the Reggie guy at locals now because I'm like literally yeah. the only person there who plays Reggie. And it's actually hilarious. And everyone's like, oh, my God, how do we counter LDF this week? Like one of my buddies who like plays like Mew and stuff. He literally like added like four Lost City into his deck just because he's like scared of like my like the Reggie matchup. Cause, like, I, scared of the Reggie. Yeah, I beat him in the I beat him in the limitless uh, or the the team challenge qualifier number one. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just the Reggie guy now. There's a tournament on Monday I'm gonna be going to. Uh, the winner gets that Charizard uh, ETB thing that Pokemon are releasing. So I, I might bring Reggie again. Oh, that ultra premium yeah. collection. Yeah, yeah, that's like the prize for getting first place. So I might bring that. Uh, that's a sick prize. It is. Yeah, it is. yeah. I, I'm probably gonna bring Reggie. Actually, Monday's Thanksgiving too. So we'll have to see how the tournament. We kind of like how people go or whatever because it's thanksgiving in canada oh you live in canada yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm like different yeah yeah we got thanksgiving on monday uh but other than that yeah my week's been pretty straightforward what about you cal um i had to come back from peoria my flight was in chicago and i ended up missing it because i had to get on the amtrak from um from peoria to chicago to catch my flight but then i ended up making um... the finals which i didn't account mm -hmm. for so, like, my flight was, like, kind of around that time-ish, and I, I couldn't make it. So then I ended up getting stuck in Peoria another day, <laughs> missed my flight, had to pay, like, 200 more bucks, like, 150-ish yeah. to um, change my flight and get a new one for the next day. And I ended up getting back to Seattle uh, about a day and a half late. Damn. And then um, I ended up just getting back here, getting back into the swing of things with school, doing some coaching, practicing, doing some online tournaments, but that's about it, roughly. Yeah, you've been killing it. You've won, uh, like, two more, recently. More like winning. Yeah. More like winning some yeah. online tournaments. Yeah, you've won, like, two of them. <laughs> Did you, wait, so remember that one night, me and you and Zach were chilling or whatever, and you both were on Blissey. Mm -hmm. Did you win that tournament? Because I think I went to bed after. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cal's a beast. Cal's winning online tournaments and like almost winning IRL tournaments, which is kind of crazy. So we definitely got to get into kind of the the Peoria run for Cal because that was insane for sure. Getting second place yeah. like that is kind of crazy. And his loss to Tord was kind of unfortunate. Obviously, you kind of had Palkia yeah. draws, you bricked, and then he crammed you. And do yeah, definitely due to those like <laughs> uncontrollable situations yeah. and definitely yeah. But I think it is time we do the sponsorships. So we can start off with Atlas. Of course, if y'all are going to get anything 
at Atlas. If you're looking to get a great price on any and all Pokemon TCG products, head over to Atlas Collectibles and see their humongous selection of Pokemon and Magic cards. And of course, at the checkout, use TSS12, the, the code TSS12, because you get yourself a 12% discount. That is a lot to save. 12% is a lot. That is crazy. So make sure to use code TSS12 if you get anything at Atlas Collectibles. And uh, make sure you check them out. So if you're not looking for those physical cards, you're more of the online type of person, if you head over to ptcgostore.com, use the Shuffle Squad code TSS5. You save yourself 5% on your order there for all those um, PTCGO codes, and that directly supports us at the Shuffle Squad. It really, really helps us out. So make sure to go get yourself some codes. Also, if you want to ask the pod some questions, feel free to send them over to podcast at the shuffle squad.com for the chance of them being answered on next week's podcast. You can also send us suggestions, topic ideas you'd like to hear, and even recommend guests that you would like to see on the podcast as well. So send us some stuff. We'll talk about it. And I think it's time for guests that Pokemon. Do, 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 do. So. Cal, okay. you do know how to play Guess That Pokemon? No. No? Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be... So Lindsay's going to name a Pokemon that we don't know what mm -hmm. it is, but she's going to give us hints towards what that Pokemon is, and we got to guess what Pokemon it is through the hints that she gives us. Every time we get a guess wrong, she gives us another hint. So. Yeah. Yep, and you guys will be working together for that as well. So, this puzzle was brought to you by our sponsor, PokeX Word. So that is the best place to get your daily fill of those Pokemon-inspired puzzles. And they post new puzzles every single day. It's kind of like Wordle, where it's like you can, you know, take that that time in the day to do like your little puzzle, clear your mind. Um, they recently launched that version of the Guess the Pokemon segment on their website, so go check them out. Be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. You can share your results. I bet you can't beat my results. So mm. go on there, do the puzzle, share them on Twitter, um, follow them, get your get entered in your chance to win those codes, and we'll go ahead and start with this Guess That Pokemon. So the Pokemon for you guys today we are doing eight letters. It's gonna be eight letter Pokemon, and your first hint is generation two. Hmm, so eight letters, generation two. Eight letters, gen two. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna think here. Uh, what are some gen two Pokemon that have eight letters? All right, we got T Y P H L O S. -S eight letters, Ruger. That's nine letters, damn. Hmm. This one's usually the hardest question, Cal. So I would mm -hmm. say we should just like just get something like out of the way, just in case. All right, let me just think of a Pokemon with eight letters real quick. T Y R A N I T A R. That's nine letters. Dang, I can't think of an eight letter Pokemon. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know any eight either. I'm thinking two. What is there? Uh... If you just want to guess a random Pokemon, we can just we can just yeah, we should go, do that. Go yeah. ahead to. All right, I'm gonna guess Crocona. It is not. Crocodile, no. Crocodile. Okay, Cal, do you want to guess, or we just go ahead and hit number two? Uh, I'm stumped on this one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard to think. Yeah. We'll go. We'll go to that second hint. So this is going to be the attack name. So we got the attack, poison sting. Poison sting. All right, so it's a poison Pokemon, or it could be a bug Pokemon that has a poison move. Poison. Poison. Hmm. Let's see here. A Poison thing. Is it Ariados? It is not. Ooh, it's not Ariados, damn. It is not. It's not Ariados. You might you might be around the around the right right area. Okay. Maybe uh hmm. guess it's pretty warm. Gen two. Hmm. So Gen it's gotta be a two. poison it's either a poison Pokemon or a bug Pokemon. I know he's a poison move. What's Aridos's prevolution kill? Do you think that might be it? I don't. I don't know. I think it's Finnerack. Yes, yeah, right? Is that it? You guessing? Yeah, I'll guess Finnerack. It is. Oh, it is Finnerack. It is. See, teamwork. So, yeah, oh, that's, that's how we do it. Teamwork, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, uh, if you guys wanted to hear that Pokedex and share that flavor text. Uh, and you guys probably would have gotten it with this one. It's with threads from its mouth, 
It fashions yeah. sturdy webs that won't break even if you set a rock on them. Yeah, it's definitely a spider pole. Uh, def- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So that one definitely would have given it away. So yeah. I'm glad we got it before that super obvious mm-hmm. hint. Perfect spider just in time for Halloween this month. Goes with oh, the yeah, theme. that's why yeah. I picked it. <laughs> oh, last week's episode was a dark Pokemon, right? What was it? What was last week again? Zorark. Zorark. It was yeah, Zorark. so another like, <laughs> yeah, another like ghost spooky, like scary Pokemon. Yeah, and I got my Mimikyu. I got my mm-hmm. Mimikyu beanie from from uh, from Pokemon. You got so that from the Pokemon rocking, Center. Rocking the Mimikyu. But your package came. I did. And I did. Get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> it did. I, I think I was home when it got delivered. Yeah. And I was home, but it's just, I wish I could make it. <laughs> oh. It is what it is. Poka X Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day, and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokaxword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. So we can go ahead and kind of move on to, we can kind of do a quick little recap on Peoria. So Cal, let's talk a little bit about kind of why you chose to play Palkia, some of the the text that you had in there. I know you were playing, like you were still rocking the Leon, uh-huh. um, canceling Cologne. I know you had that Drapion V. If you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I looked at the tournament and I played Palkia to Baltimore. So I knew that Palkia was very strong. One of the main decks that I thought was countering Palkia and had a pretty favorable matchup was the Flying Pikachu deck. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really think that Flying Pikachu was going to be played like that anymore moving forward because Garatina and all the other decks kind of outclass it, I believe. And like the V Star ability being able to just kill it whenever is pretty bad. And then also not being able to shut down those um, those one prize loss zone decks because they just have so many different outs. And then escape ropes with escape ropes and combos with boss. Flying Pikachu kind of gets put in situations where it gets knocked out very easily by Pokemons. So I just thought that Flying Pikachu was going to see a big decrease. And with Flying Pikachu seeing such a big decrease, I think Palkia was going to be a very strong play. Um, some of the techs I played were Drapion. I liked the Drapion for this meta because I thought that Mew going into the tournament was pretty strong. I think Palkia has a very strong Mew matchup, but sometimes I was through testing, I was finding it hard to deal with the double turbo Mew because they're able to, if they go first, go second, and then go cross switcher onto a Palkia and then Avery you in the same turn, which sometimes can be very annoying. Wiping three of your board, leaving you without a Palkia, and then putting you in tough situations where you have to choose to discard the Greninja or the Sobble, and then it sometimes gets very sticky against that deck. Yeah. Now, I, I definitely think the Drapion was a good meta call because, I mean, the Mew deck did really well, and a lot of big players were on the Mew deck. Obviously, the Fusion Strike Mew deck has seen a massive decline in popularity mm-hmm. and play, and I think um, the the more straightforward Turbo Mew is more... It's more like accustomed to like, I guess you could say it's more custom to like sacking, right? Where it's like it only plays the four double turbos. It relies yeah. very heavily on a lot of coin flips, like the Cramomatics. Hitting stuff mm-hmm. off of Pokestop is very relevant. And then obviously Silene is a very Silene. big factor, yeah. 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 Uh, I think I do think the Drapion was a good call on the Palkia, because I feel like I I mean I obviously Mew players going into Peoria were very cautious of Drapion. That's something mm-hmm. that they're definitely on their radar, but if I was playing Mew and I was playing against a Palkia, I would not expect them to drop down a Drapion. Yeah. I would not expect it and I would not see it coming. So I do feel like, d- did you have some surprises there where you would drop it down and your opponent's kind of like, uh. Yeah. My <laughs> or did you even play, played. you played against Mews? Yeah. I used a Drapion a few times as well against mirror matches because um, you can sobbles, knock out yeah. a Palkia oh, with it yeah, as yeah, well. So if they go big turn brain. two, keep calling, you can go Drapion, Choice Belt, Cross Switch, or Knockout. So there's interesting things you can do it with it. I only used it in mirror match and against Mew, but I wanted to make sure that I had a card that basically guaranteed that I won Mew. Yeah. I I, I mean, Mew's good for Palkia a lot of the time. They fill their entire bench up. You can do a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. And the Drapion's really good because sometimes you sometimes Palkia can struggle to take out two Mew V Maxes, but when you have yeah. the ability to just get take one out, like because a lot of the time the Mew deck might be able to loss zone your Drapion, right? Um, and Mew's yeah. now starting to play Path of Peak in the deck, literally for the Drapion. 
Um, mm-hmm. So the Drapion is still good. Like just even knocking out one Mu V Max, a lot of the time is all you really need to do in Palkia. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think that it was a really good pick. And obviously, like you said, that idea of using it in the mirror match against opposing Palkia Vs because of their keep calling, that's actually really smart. And you can also like Melanie to the yeah. Drapion if maybe they have like two Sobbles down or whatever. Yep. So yeah, definitely a really, really interesting idea with that Drapion. I don't think a lot. I don't know if a lot of Palkia players really would have had that idea in mind just to add a drape down to the deck because they're always they're probably thinking like, oh, Mew is free. It's one of Palkia's mm-hmm. best matchups. And then they then yeah. yeah, when when the double turbo build does what you said, like the Avery, the cross switcher early knockouts, mm-hmm. Palkia having a slower setup than they do, and then they can like cross switcher your Palks before you evolve them. Yeah, that drape down definitely can kind of like ease things up for the matchup. I would say. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so what what were some of those mm-hmm. matchups that were I guess more so difficult um that you weren't maybe if anything you weren't necessarily expecting or um throughout the day I played a lot of Kiram. Yeah. I played I think 8 on the day around throughout day 1 and day 2. I didn't expect wow. to hit a flying Pikachu because I thought flying Pikachu was kind of just like a last that type of deck. Mm-hmm. Like, going into this tournament, I, I thoroughly think that the Jolteon Flying Pikachu deck beats Palkia. I think that it's a very tough matchup. But, like, I don't know if someone can play that deck successfully into this meta because of all the loss zone and all the different type of archetypes mm-hmm. that it does not stop anymore. Yeah, I agree. So I didn't expect to hit one of those. I did hit one my round 10. I ended up beating it because we both had very iffy, slow starts. But my starts just were a slightly better. So I was able to come out of it. It wasn't playing the Jolteon, though. It was just playing the Flying Pikachu and the Arceus. Mm -hmm. But it was one of the difficult matchups for sure that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I mean, Flying Pikachu has seen, like, a big decline. Uh, Some people Mm -hmm. were like, oh, Flying Pikachu, Arceus, Giratina kind of might be the new Flying Pika deck. But that deck hasn't really gone anywhere. And now people are just kind of realizing that just normal, straight Arceus, Giratina is just better than Flying Pikachu. And, I mean, like you said, Pikachu is just kind of, like... It, it, it's okay against Palkia, but again, mm-hmm. like, it's not as good as it used to be in the meta. And I don't even think Flying Pikachu is going to beat Lost Box. I mean, especially Tord's list had ropes and he had yeah. Cross Switcher in the deck. So, like, yeah. yeah, Tord had a lot of counters. I mean, not to mention Sableye still works against Pikachu, too. Goes right through it. Yeah. So yeah. you can literally go, like, Sableye to the Pikachu and then set up a play with, like, Cross Switcher, Rope, Charizard, to knock yep. it out. Yeah, it's definitely not as good as it used to be. Again, it does still have that good Palkia matchup, but I think that Jolteon Pikachu Arceus deck is just no longer really that good. I mean, Jolteon is okay against Palkia, but, like, what else are you going to use it against? It's going to be a dead card in most other matchups. Um, like, yeah. Even against the Lost Zone decks, like, even if they have, like, a Radiant Greninja that you can shut off, or even Cram, it's still probably not really going to matter too much. Very useful. You know? Exactly. Yeah, to get all of those pieces just to shut off a very small portion of that deck that that deck really doesn't even need yeah. too mm-hmm. much of. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how fast the meta has been changing. I feel like with a lot of these big online tournaments, it's like Cal winning these tournaments with Blissey. There was a couple of Blisseys at this 1K. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, he's <laughs> catching up a little bit of steam lately. Yeah, it seems pretty good right now. I mean, not only is Blissey like still kind of like powerful, it's also got Miltank, and Miltank is like not being respected right now. And even uh-huh. if it is... It's not hard to deal with. Like, a lot of the answers people have are, like, Empoleon, right? Kiram, Kiram is a really good matchup for Blissey Miltank if you're able to deal with those Empoleons because mm-hmm. Miltank just autos the Kiram matchup unless they're, like, playing a weird list with, like, Phoebe or Cancel Clone or something. Yeah. And when people aren't respecting Miltank, Miltank becomes a lot better. And Blissey Miltank has a very good Lost Box matchup, too, I feel, because of all the healing it has, right? Yeah. Like, Cram will hit you. And then you just go hyper potion, heal it, and it's like okay, wipe it all away. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and if you if you can't get rid of that uh, cape of toughness on the Blissey, Charizard can't even one shot it. Exactly, and like Sableye's not doing too much. Yeah, Blissey seems pretty good in the meta right now. Will it be good for Salt Lake City is going to be the main question. I feel like Blissey will have a bit of a harder Giratina matchup. Giratina has, yeah, yeah they have Shred and Cram for the Mill Tank. They have the mm-hmm. ability to insta KO a Blissey. They can one shot a Blissey with a Choice Belt. They have Lost yeah. Vacuum. Yeah, Lost Remover. Yeah, like. Or Lost Vacuum. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially with like what? Hisuian Zor, Arc Star. Uh, Arceus Gudra. I mean, they, those do not have answers to yeah. Mill Tank. Mm-hmm. 
as of right now, you they do not. do not have an answer to Miltank. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you feel like attaching two DTE to Bibrol and getting super lucky mm -hmm. hitting double heads. It's yeah. just not enough. <laughs> not enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean... So, yeah. Like, and it, it, so RC Scooter is like another deck, I guess, we can talk about. Uh, did you hit any in uh, Peoria? No? No, I didn't play against nice. any. Nice, yeah. Because, I mean, that deck ended up doing really well. I know uh, Andrew Strada got day mm -hmm. two with it. Cyrus Davis, they also, like, did pretty well. They got top 16. Top 16. Yeah, they lose. lost their winning in on stream, um, which I think they lost uh -huh. it to a mirror match, right? It was a Guja arc mirror match. Oh, no, match. I think it was, it was tied against um, Apolkia, Apolkia, yeah. but it ended up giving them both top 16 instead of one making top yeah, 8, if I was yeah. right. It's unfortunate, but... Yeah, there were two. There were two Gujas in the top 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think Gudra's really good. I mean, it was a good meta call, right? Like, yeah, it it's was. great against Lost Box. Like, I almost want to say it, like, autos Lost Box to that point. Like, as It does very well against Lost Box. It does pretty good against Palkia, from my understanding as well. Yeah. It just struggles against certain decks, like those uh, mill tank decks. It's just a yeah, struggle. Yeah, it just, it just does not have an answer to mill tank. It does not, no. Yeah. Kiram can be um, very iffy sometimes as well. Yeah, Kiram's an interesting I've, one. I've... I've seen uh, and like talked to some people at my locals um, doing an Arceus Gudra with like an Aegislash in there I have that, just for I that have, shred attack. Yeah. I have Arc Gudra built IRL right now and I might play it on Monday yeah. instead of Reggie and I have the 1-1 one, one Aegislash too. The Aegislash V for the mill tank and then the V Max. Yeah. The V Max, yeah, great against Kieran, but you can also use it against V Stars too, I found. It's actually really mm -hmm. easy to have that thing do 280 to a Giratina. So I was playing against the Giratina yeah, deck. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was playing against Giratina with it, and the Aegislash VMAX just kind of came in and cleaned house. And that thing's super bulky with, like, a big charm and a Gardevoir in play. It's hard to one-shot, especially with, like, Kiram too, can struggle to one-hit KO it if they don't get, like, yeah. five energy on it. So I think Arceus Gudra is a pretty good call for uh, Salt Lake. I, I think a lot of people are going to really take towards winning list and obviously run with it for Salt yeah. Lake, right? And that tells me that, like... There, and that's the thing. There's like a difference between a good Lost Box player and then someone who maybe can't pilot it as well. Like Tord is Tord is known for playing. Like as of recently, he's been known for playing these like more strategic kind of yeah. slow burn strategy heavy decks, like that Urshifu you know deck that he played yeah. and Lost Box. Like the, his list is a lot different than what other lists look like. He had four Path in the deck, and when you're looking at it, you're like, why yeah. would you play Path? When you have Radiant Charizard. And I've played against plenty of people who net deck towards list and path themselves out three of the game. It's hilarious vacuum. when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I know, like, yeah, Tord had three vacuums, but, like, people, like, I, it's just, like, it feels like that deck has a higher skill gap between other Lost Box decks. It's very hard to play. And I mm -hmm. like, I liked his path version mm -hmm. so, so, so much better than the Pokestop canceling to I agree. So yeah, much better. Way better. I mean, it's harder to play. Don't get me definitely. wrong, but and you have to be very conservative. But, but it is better, right? Like you do, you know. Like Path the Peak is one of like the best cards right now, and I like Tord's kind of reasoning for it. Is like he played it just because Path is a good card, not because it's like. I mean, it's obviously good against like Empoleon stuff, but he he never he never mm -hmm. was like, oh, this card is like you know always the best. He, he says it's a good card against most matchups where Path just wins you games sometimes and. I mean, I agree with that. There's a reason why I've put Path in my Reggie decks. I know Zach Lasaw, shout out to Zach. He played um, Reggie's to Peoria. His build was different than what Azul's team was on because he had yeah. the Cancel Clone Pokestop engine. And, yeah. and then it's like, well, wouldn't Path be better? And I like Path a lot more in Reggie's too because like Path helps against Empoleon, but it's just also one of those cards where like it can stop your opponent from playing the game and in single yeah. prize decks, sometimes that's all you need. Like Lost Box, oh, that's an extra turn where you get to do Sableye damage or an extra cram hit, or mm -hmm. it gives me an extra turn to try to find more Reggie pieces. So the path in the, the Lost Box deck, I think, is very smart. And I think um, if you're going to play that deck for so like I definitely think you have to be mindful of your plays. You have to practice with it because when yeah. you play that deck, you don't want to, you want to make sure you're conservative with your path and your Lost Vacuums if you're planning on using the Radiant Charizard in a matchup because you can't path yourself when Charizard's in play, yeah. right? So. Resource management is like the one hundred percent like mm -hmm. most important part of that deck, and sometimes yep. it's very difficult to do that. Not you have to like have an understanding of what's in your discard, what's in your prizes, what's in your um, law zone, and what's in your deck at all times. So it's it's a very tedious deck, and it takes a lot of thinking for sure. Like every turn, every action is very important when you're flower selecting, and could like throw the entire match just by selecting the different card. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you yeah, had firsthand that... experience of kind of witnessing that on stream, right? In the finals. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and w with these, the, especially like the single prize version of the last box with all these super insane, like 
all the all the tedious stuff you have to think through that on top of it being a single prize deck you're looking at time mm -hmm. here you're looking at time you have to uh -huh. make these decisions these very important game winning decisions quickly <laughs> under under a lot of pressure so it's definitely one of those like higher skill uh a higher skill decks but as of right now it kind of seems like that's going to be the biggest type of engine moving forward, at least for the next few regionals, especially once Inteleon rotates. Um, and I kind of want to ask y'all what you think about when Inteleon rotates and these people who have been like relying on like Inteleon engine <laughs> decks and like not yeah. learning how to like do other types of decks. I'm pointing at myself uh -huh. for those who are listening and not watching. Um, like I, I just this week was really trying to start grinding out the Lost Zone engine and really trying to learn, um, you know, the basics of it, of like the sequencing, because the sequencing can be so like you forget to like put down that comfy that you scooped up in your hand and like you escape rope first, like it, th that type of silly stuff and learning those those decisions of what you're putting in the Lost Zone and knowing what you need and don't need per match. And uh -huh. how do you guys think that that's going to change the meta like going forward, especially when it's in Teleon? is out like do you think that there's going to be like skill gaps like a like a bigger skill gap between yeah these players yeah. i mean honestly the italian engine kind of already is a big skill gap i feel like like you anyone yeah. can play babero which is like the easiest card in the planet to pilot but i've seen yeah. italian players before i play against them and they don't know what they're shady dealing for are they shade dealing for a card that they should not have grabbed you know yeah but i do think the comfy engine is a little bit more skill intensive than Inteleon because of resource mm -hmm. management and even myself i have done like 50 videos now on like lost zone engine decks i've played a lot of it on stream i'm even going to say i'm not even that great with the lost zone engine i still haven't figured out the best things there's a whole debate on twitter in the past week about what you want to do first do you want a yeah. chorus first or do you want a comfy first you know what i mean it's not so situational very but... <laughs> situational and i mean i was watching toward on stream actually a few days ago and i think he was playing the lost box deck he was it was his first stream back after peoria he was playing the lost mm -hmm. box deck and he was in a scenario where he had the ability to go either chorus first or comfy first and he actually opted to do chorus first because he wanted his goal was to get more comfies in play so instead of doing comfy first he did chorus first because he saw the most amount of cards in that scenario which could have got him more outs to comfy because his objective that turn was to get comfies in play and try to chain as many comfies as he can so instead of doing mm -hmm. comfy first he went for chorus because he saw more cards and he was able to see more comfy outs which helped him out so that's like a great example of like why that engine is better yeah you know and I do think that there is going to be a lot more kind of skill going into um, the next kind of format because if people start relying on Lost One Engine, and Lost One Engine is still very good. I mean, Mirage yeah. Gate is insane. Any new card that comes out, you can literally look look at that card and be like, would that card be good with Mirage Gate? And it would probably would be good. And yeah, definitely like there's a big skill gap between playing chorus playing comfy managing resources i played against yeah. plenty of lost on decks where they like chorus or comfy away stuff i'm like i scratch my head i'm like why would you get rid of that in the lost zone so definitely going to be a higher skill gap to answer your question there 100 percent. i definitely think that the lost zone engine is a little bit more complicated than the inteleon inteleon mm -hmm. if you practice like through it and like really understand what you're doing with the deck Yes, it's very complicated because you need to chain things and you need to like think next turn, next turn, next turn ahead, and you need to like grab the specific right card in the best scenario to like give you the That's maximum amount thing. of odds yeah. and Palkia and decks like that and Kiram and things like that. But I think that moving forward with the Lost Zone box decks and like the Lost Zone engine, I think that it's very skillful because there's a lot of skill gap that's going to be in the game with people Lost Zoning cards that they need, discarding things that they need. Because once you lost on something, it's gone forever. Yeah. So it's just like lost zoning a fire energy and prizing one and then just not being able to Charizard the entire match is something that theoretically could happen. Or lost zoning a Clara because you don't think you need it, prizing one or having to discard one early. You don't have the pal pad in your deck. Now you don't have Clara. Now you can't Charizard twice. And you're just in a situation where you literally cannot do anything. Yeah, there's a lot of thinking ahead. And even like, more than that, it's like if you're going to use Lost Zone engines with like Sableye, that's another card that requires a lot more thinking and skill than most normal cards because Sableye, mm -hmm. like I, I've played against plenty of Sableye decks where like they will use Sableye's Lost Mine attack, but they'll put the damage counters in these really weird places where I'm like, 
I'm, I'm looking at him like, in my head, it was more logical to put the damage counters there to set up for this play, but they put them in different places. Yeah. So, like, even, like, little things like Sableye can be very relevant in that deck, too. Mm-hmm. So, definitely a big skill gap. Obviously, the Barrel will still be around. And Barrel is still a pretty good card. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's very straightforward, very, like... It's very conservative because you just have to play like a two-two bit barrel in your deck instead of the entire Lost Zone engine with heavy counts to switch. But the other thing with Lost Zone deck is it will also lose Scoop Up Net on top of like if Intellion rotates, so a Scoop Up Net. But we have Switch Cart, Rope, and yeah. uh, Normal Switch to help out there. Yeah, Lost Zone box has a lot of sequencing as well, where it's like I net first and then I switch into this. I do this first. I do that first. I cart into this. I Comfy first. I do this first. Colrus. There's a lot of different things that go into it. Do I have eight in my loss zone? Did I keep track of how much is there? Do I have 10? Did I comfy for the right amount before I send it up this Pokemon? Did I auto promote the wrong Pokemon? Should I have promoted a comfy first, attach or treat it, and then did a cram so I can get one extra card in the loss zone so I can take advantage of that the next turn? There's a lot of things that go into the account of the loss zone deck that people don't necessarily think of and see when they think they see the deck mm-hmm. played and see it going down. But like playing it IRL and like even time management. Mm-hmm. There's so much to go into like effect for the deck to be successful that it's very high skilled, I believe. Yeah, I think the 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 skill ceiling is very high for Lost Box. And I'll ask you this: What was your kind of like game plan against Lost Box with Palkia? Because I feel like that matchup does seem like a bad matchup for Palkia. Do you th- mm-hmm. so you are, how many Lost Box did you play against apart from Tord in uh, Peoria? Not only Tord. Oh wow, really? <laughs> okay, <That's fair>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought you played against more. Because I'm like I'm looking at I'm like, does Palkia really be Lost Box? What would your like game plan with Palkia be versus Lost Box, would you say? I think the game plan is to kill a Manaphy early, mm-hmm. force him to have to Clara one back, and then go for the Greninja kill two play when you're going from two to four and then go down to two prizes and then force him to have to go Charizard knockout, Charizard knockout. Yep. And you have, if they haven't killed a Palkia or two Sobbles already. Right. I think you have to go first kill with Palkia, second kill with Palkia, target down one of those Manaphys so that they can't go double Manaphy on you. Which also, they could just lost on one themselves and that plans out the door. Yeah. Or they could discard one and then also kind of that plans out the door, force them to have to Clara so that they can't Chorus and then go Sableye or Chorus and then go Cram as well. So it kind of like uh, bumbles their like, set up a little bit. So you want to target down that Manaphy and then target it down again, go canceling Cologne with the Greninja and then take two after that four prize turn to go to two prizes. Mm-hmm. And then you're in a very good spot, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because like the canceling Cologne and the Greninja combo is still pretty nasty against Lost mm-hmm. Home Box. And like, because I, I look at the deck, I'm like, does Palkia, like how does Palkia be Lost Home Box when they got the Radiant Charizard? Like I know you might have Roxanne and you have the Path. And you have, like, obviously, Aqua Bullet and Teleon is very relevant in your deck, too. And you can still get those sneaky Greninja plays if they don't get Manaphy down early enough. Um, so I guess it isn't too bad. It is kind of insane. You just played against one the entire tournament. Yeah, I played against a few Garatina decks. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of Lost Box, but it's not, like, the single, single price, price Lost Box yeah. style deck. Yeah, Save they don't, I, yeah. And spam. Yeah, they don't, like, play, like, the same kind of strategy. Yeah. And I would say Palkia. They don't have as many switching cards to get as many cards in the Lost yeah. Zone quicker to where they're getting mm-hmm. those Sableyes mm-hmm. potentially on the second turn. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Palkia does seem like a pretty favored matchup against Giratina because you're just able to, like, Palkia feels faster than Giratina, basically. Like, especially when you have Cross Switcher, it's pretty easy to KO those Giratina Vs before they become a V Star. And yep. yeah. And they could even just miss, honestly, going second. Like, mm-hmm. I played Giratina a good amount going second. I usually do not get Mirage Gate. Usually on the turn three, I get it. But turn two, if I go first, I usually do not get Mirage Gate out mm-hmm. unless I'm drawing particularly well. Yeah, and at that point, it's just kind of like game over. Because Giratina is one of those yeah. decks you have to get the Mirage Gate like on your second turn of the game in order for that deck mm-hmm. to be successful. Because otherwise, it feels a little too slow against something like Palkia. Because Palkia is always going to be faster than you unless they have a bad start also. Unless they're just bricking, but Palkia inherently usually is drawing pretty well, especially if they're going second because they have access to Irida, so they have so many outs yeah. to get the battle pass yeah. that it's probably unlikely that they'll have a bad setup going second. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, unless Palkia, like, yeah. prizes, like, Greninja or, like, important resources or something, you know? Yeah, Which, yeah. George just has a complete dead hand. Yep. Yeah. I know that did yeah, happen to I you. did play against some Lost Box today. Mm-hmm. Um, at the 1K 
but I my my calculus was was a bit different than Cal's. Um, I didn't do the drape beyond. I didn't really expect any muse, mm-hmm. and I think there was only like maybe a couple there. Yeah, I didn't hit any. Um, I didn't didn't do the drape beyond. I took out the O rod, and I went for the um, the double intellion. Yeah. Double shady yeah, dealing yeah. Inteleon with the quick shooting Inteleon. No goon, because mm-hmm. I'm the one who always starts with goon. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of went for like more of that route. And I I feel like I have, and I, I've been practicing the last box matchup a lot with the, that list. And I feel like, you know, you use Palkia early on for me. And then, uh, you know, obviously the, that cross switcher cologne on the Manaphy when you can slash if you can. Um, and then, like towards the end, if you're getting towards uh, that radiant Charizard, you try to just like I, I would just like attack with like my Inteleon, so that way, um, you know, to, like try to get the Charizard in the discard pile, like maybe knock it out when when you have like four or three prizes, and that way, uh, and then start hitting with Inteleon, so then they're not able to necessarily boss and Clara, or like yeah. they're less likely to have that. Um, that I didn't pl- I didn't play against like towards list where they have that cross yeah. switcher option, but but I did play against some ones that have like the boss, but you know they were they were forced to Clara to get the mm-hmm. radiant Charizard back, and then you know would would try to knock out my Inteleon, but then I had two Inteleons and just kind of try to go that route, and it usually works out for me. I try to like save my path when I can. Um, you know, they usually they'll put the three damage counters on one of the Palkia so that the Palkia is within the one shot. And then I just try to make it so where they can't, you know, get my Palkia into active and, you know, kind of just like try to take advantage of those Inteleon plays yeah. with the quick shootings and all yeah. that, all that nonsense. I mean, a, a quick shooting Inteleon can, can knock out a, a Comfy, so. Yeah, I can, yeah. And they can't, it's harder for them to get one shot returned by Cram a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So. It, exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean. Y'all are talking about that. I'm just like here, like I just main Reggie. Like if I was at Peoria, mm-hmm. I would have brought Reggie too. Um, yeah. So it was cool to see Zach obviously play Reggie. He's on the team. I think uh, Shaman. Alex also played. Josh and Alex, yeah. I think, also were on Reggie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of top players were on Reggie for that tournament. Yeah. Um, I think there was eight in the top 32, if I'm not wrong. Dang. None ended up making top eight, but there was one that got ninth place, if I'm right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nine. Yeah, I think Kid Stark was on Reggie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I saw. Yeah, he was on stream. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Reggie was a pretty good play. Yeah, I I agree. The the issue with Reggie is like it's a good play, but the problem is it's a Reggie deck. <laughs> like it's not. Yeah. It it prones to brick a lot, and that's one of its issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the games I've seen on that they streamed at Peoria with Reggie, the losses were because the deck bricked and. That's the problem. Reggie is better in a best of three scenario, though, because if you have a game you break, yeah. you can go into the next game. Reggie going first is always very strong. Reggie can also go second and sometimes get that lucky turn one attack sack out of nowhere. Um, I still think Reggie's probably good for Salt Lake. I don't think people are... I mean, even though it had a really good showing at Peoria, and it still like did fairly well, I don't think people are really going to respect Reggie that much still. Like, you know. Yeah, I don't think people are really going to tech for it because it did not represent itself in the top eight. Mm-hmm. So it was like slightly out of it. So it's not really on people's radar. Exactly. I think if you really look at the data, though, it should be because when you like look at it, you're like, oh, OK, eight players made this deck into top 32. Its win rate was pretty high. And it's a lot of top players were on it. Zach was on it. Azul was on it. His group, um, Zach Shemansky also played it. I think Grant Manley played mm-hmm. it. There was a lot of top players on Reggie's and that's just very scary for sure. Very scary. Yeah, Reggie, that's why I like it so much because like people don't really, it's like one of those decks that I feel like doesn't get respected enough because it doesn't do as, it doesn't win tournaments as much because people don't like respect it and then they, it doesn't win tournaments and then it's like because Reggie is so bricky and that's his issue that Reggie will only lose because you brick one or two turns with it. That's yeah, a lot of the times. Reggie's is one of those decks where, in theory, it should beat every single deck in the format. It's just that Reggie <laughs> is also one of those decks that does not get to play the game one out of three games usually. Yep. Which is just unfortunate because it's it just needs so many pieces to actually get going. Like you need all the Reggies down. You need the specific energies in the discard to mm-hmm. hit the specific matchup. And like I played against one Reggie in the tournament, and um. In my experience, the game that he set up, he just beat me flat out. Like, it wasn't very close. Yeah. The other two games, it was a case of him having all the Reggies down, 
but just missing the Aurora energies and the speed energies for like one or yes. two turns too late and not getting attacks off and just not being able to be in the game. Yeah. I think Reggie going into Salt Lake is still probably good. And if, because I, I think Reggie has a good uh, Lost Box matchup. Uh, it, mm -hmm. Like, if Reggie can actually set up, I think Lost Box is still very beatable. You should be able to win the prize trade. Nine turns out of ten. And then um, if Blissey, because Blissey I think is like the big factor. Blissey, if, if, if Blissey gets more popular going into Salt Lake, Reggie also becomes even better. because Reggie poops all over Blissey. Yeah. Yeah. I played against, have no answer to Reggie. Yeah, and a lot of the Blissey lists now aren't even like, I don't think they're even playing Dunsparce. And no, even they if, don't. No, and that's huge. Like, if a Blissey deck doesn't respect the the fighting Pokemon, it doesn't play Dunsparce, you just literally just auto that matchup with just, like, a Reggie Rock. And, um, yeah, like, I played against the, I played against Blissey yesterday at Locals, round one. They did have a Dunsparce, which caught me off guard, but I found Boss, and I knocked it out quick enough. My other game plan was just Aleki at twice, which Aleki was also... Aleki twice, because they don't have any real response. I guess they could cape it on the bench if you yeah. don't play Boss, but... I believe that Reggie should play at least some way to switch your opponent out to active, have that be boss, or maybe a cross switcher build with um Pokestop. With Poke Pokestop, but I believe that the path is better with boss right now. Yeah, yeah. Path is path boss is just really good right now in Reggie. Like yeah. you don't really need to tech like for Pikachu, you don't have to play escape rope anymore because Pikachu's barely gonna see any play. No, you uh, probably won't play against any Pikachu's. Yeah, I guarantee you. You're not if you're gonna if you're bringing Reggie to Salt Lake, you probably won't hit a single pikachu deck unless if, like if you're having a bad day you might hit one maybe two if it's like worst case scenario bottom tables, you maybe. most likely play none maybe like bottom tables more right if you're like doing worse in the tournament then you might start hitting the more jankier stuff that reggie might randomly struggle with yeah. um another deck that actually might re might have a bit of a surgence is actually shadow rider which is kind of weird to say but like shadow rider actually is okay right now i know um one of the Kreckler brothers was on Shadow Rider Arceus yeah. with Espeon, and I think he was also streamed against his brother. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he got, like, destroyed, but Shadow Rider seems okay. <laughs> and actually, yeah. another funny thing, um, so Blissey's popularity is actually really good for Shadow Rider, because what Blissey, what Shadow Rider does against Blissey is they'll go, they go, I think, second, or even they can go first, too. Basically, they'll go Luminion Flannery on a Blissey, and then Shadow Mist, and they win. And I, and I know that happened to Zach in that tournament he was in where he played Blissey. Yeah, I played the same person in the finals. <laughs> yeah, like, Shadow Rider is kind of one of those, like, meme decks where it's like, oh, it's elite. Like, it's a, it's considered, like, a theme deck now more than anything else. Like, you yeah. literally queue up the ladder, you see someone with that Shadow Rider deck box, and they flip over Cresselia, and you're like, oh. Yeah. But I actually don't hate Shadow Rider in the meta. I mean, Espeon's pretty solid right now against Sableye and, and Giratina. I know Gradient Gardevoir is a good card for the deck, too. Gives Shadow Rider extra bulk, helps fix a lot of the math, and it also can give you, like, an attacker against, like, Miltank, which yeah, is kind of cool. Yeah, also a psychic type. Yep. Yeah, I, I think uh, Shadow Rider is, like, one of those weird decks that I feel like somebody's going to play and do well with that Salt Lake. Like, I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I actually think Shadow Rider's, like, kind of okay right now in yeah. the format. I think Shadow Rider's fine. I, the only issue with Shadow Rider for me that is that it struggles with Kyurem mm -hmm. and Palkia sometimes, and Kyurem just like kind of does the opposite of what shadow rider wants them to do because yeah. like even with the espion with like the energy attachments and wanting more energy down paul uh Kirim just sends it to the discard so then it just blows up any pokemon that's like setting up and it's a little bit quicker than shadow rider but shadow rider does take good matches against like lost box and some of those other decks around the meta for sure mm -hmm. yeah i i think uh it's definitely one of those like underdog plays that somebody mm -hmm. can bring and do well with out of nowhere it just depends on what attackers they have maybe someone will figure out like a cool tech card for shadow rider maybe fix the cure more the, the well, with the, with the kira match so what four four energies out of kira is doing 320 yeah if they discard all all four mm -hmm. and what shadow rider's 320 they yeah. get the guard of war down i mean, I mean but it, i was gonna say if you do the guard of war maybe a tool jammer type type combo yeah. you're you're pretty much maybe pre always preventing that um one that one shot ability. yeah that's true. yeah it's just my, my thing with the v max is obviously it's just like the, the three prize liability but uh -huh. you know i'm i'm wondering if it's you know possible to make kind of there's just not enough cards that you can fit in a no, deck no. to yeah. to kind of help with all that stuff yeah. Like, yeah it's also weak to drapeon which is unfortunate because they, uh a garatina deck can just go mirage gate and then knock it out yeah yeah that's that is yeah, pretty unfortunate yeah, yeah. too 
Um, another deck I wanted to talk about was kind of the discussion between Arceus, Duraludon, and Gudra going into Salt Lake City. So Duraludon, a lot of people are like, why are people not playing Duraludon? Why are people still playing? Like, why are people playing Gudra over Duraludon? What do you think about that uh, conversation? Prizes? Yeah, like, what do you think about that? I think that Duraludon's very weird, and it's in a very strange spot right now in the meta because Duraludon's favorable matchups are just so favorable. Yeah. But then its bad matchups are just so yeah. bad. It's just so pulverizing right now in the meta that it's in a very strange spot. Like, Duraludon hits a Zoroark, they, they can't play the game. Mm-hmm. They, they, they can't do anything. You know, Blissey, you know, you have the, the path versus your stadium battle, but, like, usually I think feel like Duraludon comes out on top in that matchup. Yeah, I agree. And then you have the um the Kira matchup, which I think is a little bit rough because they can just one-shot capability you at any point in the game, and Duraludon's more of, like, I need to tank type of deck, kind of like Gudra, if that makes yeah. sense, where it's, like, I need to tank type of deck. But then Palkia is, like, I would say pretty favorable. I would say it's definitely in Duraludon's favor because of the Avery spams and like the saving your bench, not really having like a whole lot of benches down that it's definitely probably inside Duraludon's favor. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of matchups for Duraludon right now where it's like their opponent can't do anything. Also Reggie's um, is pretty favored. Even with like a Reggie's that plays three or four paths. If you play, um, Tool Jammer, Reggie's really doesn't play a way to get rid of it, so you're two-shotting a Duraludon while they're one-shotting you. Mm-hmm. And it's just unfortunate, and as long as they like get the stadium and you miss the stadium a turn or anything goes wrong, Duraludon's probably going to win. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, Duraludon seems okay going into Salt Lake 2. Uh, do you think Gudra's still like kind of the better like tanky type of deck right now? I've been going through both of them, and I've been thinking a lot about them. I just think that Duraludon has very pulverizing wins and losses. Gudra also has pulverizing wins and losses. They're kind of like the same deck, except for there's a few key losses and a few key mm-hmm. wins. Like, I think Duraludon shreds through Mill Tank, so that's a plus. Gudra has no answer to Mill Tank, which is definitely a minus, unless you play the Aegis Slash. Mm-hmm. But I've been seeing a lot of lists play the Zalmazenta recently. Yep. So it's very iffy, and it kind of just depends on list. But I think both decks are very much the type of deck where it's like very matchup based mm-hmm. like if you hit the right matchups you can have a great day but if you hit the bad matchups and the wrong matchups you could realistically have a 3 day yeah like if you just hit like three kirims in a row you're like i'm out you know and kirim was the most played deck at the event yep. i don't know if zamazenta can fix it i want to test that mm-hmm. where if zamazenta or maybe an aegis slash can like actually really fix the matchup and make it feel a little bit more close because through my testing with Gudra, I was not doing very good against Kirim. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, the problem with the Aegis Slash and uh, Zamazenta, they're like more like late game kind of cards. Like Aegis Slash V Max does 160 base. So against Kirim, mm-hmm. you're not even one shotting them unless you play a choice belt. But Gudra isn't going to play choice belt. They always want to play Big Charm or Big Paracel. Yeah. And that's a bit of a problem for the deck. So a lot of the time, Arceus has to take a prize. Like maybe they'll knock out a Guru or maybe like a, a Crobat will come down or Luminion will come down. Um, or, like, they'll knock out a Palkia early on, and then they set the Aegis Slash, because Aegis Slash is, like, pretty good against, like, a lot of decks when, in the late game, you can make that thing really bulky. That's how I won a game when I played yeah. it, was that I had my board say it was Grading Gardevoir and the Aegis Slash with a big charm on it, so the thing had, like, 370 HP, and I still had my Hyper Potions. Yeah, I still had Cave, Hyper mm-hmm. Potion, and Double Turbo, so I literally could just sit there, do, like, 250, 280 damage every turn, and then I was able to, like, heal it where it never was able mm-hmm. to be two-shot. So, I and the problem with the Zamazenta too, it's also very fragile. Like, I still feel like you can, it's easier to KO than Aegis Slash, like, yeah. overall. Like, I don't know if Zamazenta really provides more support over something like an Aegis Slash VMAX. Because a lot of the time with yeah. Arceus, Gudra, you could just go Arceus, Gudra, Aegis Slash. And even if you have a Gardevoir in play, they can't win the game by killing Gardevoir because they still have to take yeah. an extra prize after that. So, that could still be kind of the game plan. And I think Arceus Gudra and Arceus Stroudon also kind of have to be mindful of Echoing Horn, which is pretty popular right now in yeah, most decks. I, think, I don't think Mew's a very great matchup all, also. Mm-hmm. Mew's one of those decks where if they go first, it puts you in a very weird scenario where it's like, okay, I have an Arceus down, but if I don't bench another Arceus, they're going to kill my Arceus, and then my whole game plan is just out the door and I can't set my game up. So I'm kind of being forced to put down two Arceus and a Gudra. And then it's like, Okay, I know you're going to kill an Arceus, but, like, 
here's my other Arceus, and then I have to set up, but then you're just going to Echoing Horn and win the game. But, like, if I don't put down the Arceus, you're just going to kill my only Arceus on board, and then I I can't do, play the game. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a... That's a weird scenario for that type of deck. I think Arceus Guja still might be okay, though, going into Salt Lake. Um, if it can mm-hmm. figure maybe out, like, the Blissey matchup and kind of improve that, I think it's probably fine. Uh, but again, yeah. if Lost Box is still popular, then you should be, you know, good against that. And of course, Palkia, like, I, I feel like you're going to have an influence too on the meta because obviously you got second place with Palkia, like normal, like straight Palkia yeah. over the Kirin build. And I've seen some debate over, is Kirin even worth it over just straight Palkia? Like, straight Palkia has more plays mm-hmm. like with Cross Witcher and Cancel yeah. Clone Greninja, where Kirin is more linear and just more about building up a big Kirin and just taking Building up shots. a big Kirin oh. and knocking everything out. Yeah. And exactly. the nice, yeah. And the nice thing with Palkia is that it has room for techs. I mean, we've seen techs in the, in the past, like obviously Empoleon, Crabominable is another interesting tech card people have tried out uh, for like the Mewtwo matchup. So there always could be like a way Palkia can answer some of its like tougher matchups, I feel like. and Exactly. And being able to search out those cards for those specific matchups is very good. So like with Palkia, I think it's so strong in the meta because it's one of those decks where it's like, you have an answer if you have like a realistic answer to like most decks in the meta you can just search it out with the shady dealings whenever you need it so like you're not going to be like a kiram deck that plays a roxanne and just hoping you kind of have it in your hand mm-hmm. with the palkia deck you're always going to have the roxanne and then also even with the palkia deck you have those turns against kiram where it's like i'm going to knock out you and i'm going to path you or i'm going to path marnie you and I'm going to put you in a situation where you're going to need a lot of cards to beat. Yeah. You're going to need a counter stadium, possibly a Crobat, another Kiram. You're going to need two energies Jeez. in the discard, another energy to start to um, use Kiram's uh, Glaciated World. And you're just going to need the perfect set of cards to beat me in this matchup. And if you do not get the perfect set of cards off this Marnie and Path, you're not really going to be even in the game. Yeah. Yeah, especially without having a way to search out that stadium card, not having the, yeah. the shady dealings, especially especially after a Marnie or after Roxanne. It's like you either have it or you don't. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I like playing Path and Reggie is because Path is really good against like Kirim. Like Kirim, mm-hmm. Kirim plays a lot of abilities on V Pokemon, and when even like getting like one or two turns of them, not being able to conceal cards or Glacier World, is a lot of the time enough to like win a game against those decks mm-hmm. so exactly the Karam deck needs to build up like hands to like get itself functioning and working yep. and sometimes just one path of the peak stops them dead in their track exactly yeah like i've beaten a couple Karam decks before because my deck had path in it and path bombed me like one or two turns and i was like already like miles exactly. ahead of my opponent and even by the time they set up Karam, i was already like in the prize trade where i was probably just favored to win the game at that point exactly yeah and honestly now one of the decks i'm mm. oh, sorry no, you, you, you go ahead I was gonna. I was gonna completely talk about a different deck. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Um, it's in the. It's the the Zorark deck that got tenth. Yeah. The one with the the Zorark with the the celebration smear. Yeah. I I just did my uh, Patreon article on it, but I have been playing this a little bit recently, and I actually really really enjoy this build of the Hisuian Zorark V Star. It's it, so it's got the four um, celebrations muse. Four, four, as Zorark. well as the um yep four four Zorark, uh the orangaroo and uh four scoop up nets mm. so i what i've been like finding with it is that you can make the palkia matchup a little bit favorable mm-hmm. um because you can scoop up some of these pokemon uh to kind of clear up your bench when you need to mm. uh, and yeah. like kind of do more of like the two shotting method um and like hopefully you know not getting that the return nar- return knockout and then as well like when you miss that gape jaw bog and you're not able to yeah. rebench those pokemon for the damage and you're not hitting those damage pumps using those scoop up nets has actually been super helpful like it, you know you had like you know your rangaroo down the uh halucha down a mew down you know none of them have damage counters on them and you know you're not getting those cards to do enough damage and you just you know you're scooping those up and you can put them back down when you have the gape jaw bog and get a little bit more damage that way so you can hit harder essentially yeah. it's i've actually kind of had a lot more success with this build of it than the one that got eighth um but you know the issue is if blissey does become popular that deck does not have an answer to mil tank yeah at all no it doesn't i mean literally you, you, you could play cancel clone but even then is that even enough at that point but like the one ofs the one ofs in a deck like that where you're already just like turboing through the deck like those one of cards are, you're not going to get them when you need them you're you're digging through the deck with 
the you know the V star ability or discarding that hand. I mean, you can maybe save it with the Orangaroo, like put it on top of your deck. But I feel like decks like that, and this kind of like circles back around to the Lost Box deck as well. Is like you kind of just got to play like four of the generic cards that you need because those cards are gonna be put in the Lost Zone. Like I know Tord was saying, he runs the four canceling Cologne, mm -hmm. but he only plans on using it once per game yeah. because he's like, I I, I know that. You know, either one's going to be prized, one's going to be in the lost zone. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. But I really, really liked the the Celebrations Mew version of the Zoroark. I felt like it was a lot more consistent for me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe that uh, Zoroark build that you talked about could play Canceling Clone in Salt Lake just so you can have an out to mill tank. But you can also use the clones if you play against something weird like an Empoleon deck. Or mm -hmm. like they flip over an Empoleon and you can't use Mew or Ranguru. Yeah. You, the Cancel Clone is not completely dead. So that could be a yeah. potential option going forward for that deck. I mean, that's the nice thing about Zoark is like I'm surprised that it did well. Like I do think Zoark has like more bad matchups than good matchups in my opinion. It's like I don't know if it can be Palky a lot of the time. Um, I think it has a bad Reggie matchup. Has a bad. I don't even know if it has a good Lost Box matchup. I know like Big Parasol was like used in the deck I think, but I look through your Lost Vacuum. I think it's tough. Yeah, it's very tough. Yeah, I I don't know if Zoark is that good against Lost Box. Um, but the cool thing about it is the amount of ways you could build it. I've thought about building it with uh, Jolteon Memory Capsule because you, a lot of the mm -hmm. time you might not use it, but you can use the Jolteon Memory Capsule and it helps you. It might fix your Palkia matchup a bit more. It makes it harder for Palkia and it can give and you a, Yeah, exactly. It gives you a better cure matchup, which are both like shakier matchups, I want to say. Um, yeah, those yeah. matchups are very coin flippy. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, yeah, because like with the with the halucha and the choice belt, you can one shot the Kiram, but it's like it's you 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 gotta have it. Exactly. And... <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Zork could potentially. It's one of those decks where I feel like someone might build like some like cool build of it that does well, and people mm -hmm. figure out how to make that card really work in a meta. Yeah, but, yeah I, have I don't think the optimal sure. build is out yeah. yet. It's kind. Of, it reminds me of Arceus a little bit. It's like a colorless Pokemon that you can technically use with whatever you want. I mean, it's not the same as Arceus, but yeah. like the same concept where. You can pair it with like almost anything. Like you could even play with like another yeah. attacker maybe or something. That'll be it for this week's episode. You can check out all of our socials down below. Of course, Cal is also on the Shuffle Squad. So uh, any content that might be Cal related, you've seen on the Shuffle Squad. I know we did uh, post a video on Cal's second place deck on I think it was Tuesday, la the, the, la the Tuesday that just just passed. So if you want to see Cal's deck in action on PC Joe, you can definitely check out that YouTube video and check out Cal's socials down below and all of our socials down below and all the sponsors, as always, make sure to check out all the sponsors down below and try out the Pokex word. We will catch you all on another episode of the Shuffle Pod next Thursday and peace. Peace out. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen, make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. Poka X Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokaxword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. 
we have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing, except expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the, reg the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.